Hello everyone and welcome to a video I created for SQL Oracle Apex usage and just kind of an introduction in creating your first table with some specific uh, example just to show you how to get in and start using Oracle Apex. So let's go ahead and jump in now. Once we're logged in, I'd like to click over here on the SQL Workshop. We'll click on that. Then we'll be able to go in and create our scripts. We'll go ahead and use the SQL commands option here. That'll bring up a window for us to be able to use our SQL code and be able to see the results from those. And just starting out, you can just keep it to the default and you can see here that I'm going to leave mine with, since I don't have any data in there, if I do work, I would change this, but if I go to put some sample data in, um, I'll just leave it at 10 rows just so I am verifying that I'm getting results back from the scripts that I write. Once you have created some tables and you've been working here for a while, you can click on the Find Tables button to see different tables that you've created. And you can see if you've got anything in here is a blank slate. I'm just starting out this one. But once I start creating tables, I can jump in here and see what's there. I can see what their setups are and go from there and view any, any views, see data, things like that. But right now we're just going to create a table using our basic SQL code, creating some columns and putting some parameters in place. Now once you create scripts, you want to save those so you can reuse those later. You can of course use the save button over here to save the work you did. You can give it a name and it'll be stored there for you to be able to reuse. I'm not a big fan of starting from scratch all the time, especially if it's a very complex script. So this is a great feature. Um, you know, it's Oracle Apex is just a intro tool for you to learn how to use SQL and using a uh, Oracle database. Uh, but for our purposes, uh, we can do what we need to do and you can even save your scripts and then you know export them and use them later on in you're working into a more enterprise level database system. So let's go ahead and start a table. And, uh, we're going to use the create table command and usually when I write scripts I want to keep everything capitalized just uh, because it's easy to hit the caps lock button and that's completely up to you. Or if you want to use uh, whatever your organization's uh, naming conventions are and whatever you have set up you want to obviously adhere to those rules and make it clean for the next person who might see your work and a lot of people will just use the uh, capitalization for keywords and then when you're writing your code just use lowercase it just depends on your preference or what your organization uses so I'm gonna turn on the caps lock on mine. I'm going to do the first SQL keywords we need to use. That's create table. Nothing too trivial there. And I'm going to call this an employee table. Now I've got a table create. Now what I need to do, and it's however you prefer to do this, I like to hit the enter key and I'm going to put my open parenthesis, hit the enter key for a new line and put my close parenthesis and then I'm going to end my script with a semicolon. And you can go up here and add an extra line or two in there if you like that way you're saying hey I'm creating a table it's called employee and in here is all the information that I want populated into that table for my setup of the table my design of the table and I like to start on the next line and here's where I'm gonna start putting in those columns and their parameters and I don't know let's say for this one we're gonna call uh, we have an employee well they need an employee ID so imp ID underscore ID that way you can see that that's the name that you want to show in your results and it's called an employee ID and we can easily recognize that the data type we're going to assign that I'm going to assign it in numeric we're going to keep it simple and we're going to say that can be up to 15 characters and this cannot be null now you could say well what if you're putting employees in and not assign them a name they haven't actually started yet well that's up to your organization for me for this practical purpose of this video I'm gonna say that it cannot be null there has got to be information there now I've got my first column created now I'm gonna go down here and it's up to you um, if you already you know you should have a design laid out before you come to the stage of actually creating the tables here I'm going to go ahead and add the other columns that I worked out during the design stages I know that this is going to be that no other employee is going to have the same ID ever 
So I could go ahead and create my constraint to set the employee ID is going to be my primary key. And to do that, since I know that's going to be my primary key, I'm going to create a constraint. And I want this to be named employee underscore PK for primary key. It is the SQL keywords, primary key of this table. And what's going to be my primary key? I'm going to be using the employee ID. Now I've designated that I need a constraint put on this table and that I want the constraint to be called employee primary key. And that is going to be the primary key of my employee table. And I'm using the employee ID column for that primary key. So now my constraints done. I have a table, I've got a column, I've assigned a data type, I've also put a parameter that it cannot be null, and I've created a primary key for this table. But now I'm going to add some more columns. I've got an employee, well, they've probably got a first name. And I'm going to keep with this imp for employee naming convention. So I'm going to say imp underscore first name. and use whatever naming convention is best for you or what's been established by your organization. But I can read this and having the underscores lets me know exactly what this is. So now I've given in the column a name. Now I'm going to use or assign a data type and I'm going to use bar char two. And I'm going to say that could be anywhere up to 30 characters for that parameter. And it cannot be null. They have to have a first name. Always end your line with a comma because there's more work to be done. We'll go down here to the next line and I'm going to do, you guessed it, employee last name. I'm going to use the same data type, bar char 2. We'll say up to 30 characters as well. And when you assign this, this is really when you're using these data types and, and specifying limits on data types, you're really looking at what kind of storage size are you wanting to use for your data. So if you know data limits aren't an issue, you can do whatever you want. I like to make sure that I keep things in a logical sense here. And we're going to say that that cannot be null either. So there has to be information that's input into those columns. All right, we're going to say that the employee has a higher date. So you could do imp underscore higher date and I'm going to use this the data type real trivial here date I'm going to create another column for uh, what department that employee is going to work in so this will be coming from another table that we'll create I'm just going to call this department ID and that will be a number data type now I'm going to leave this as it can be null just like the higher date because maybe we're putting information in they haven't been assigned a department ID and we haven't they haven't started so there's no hire date yet but we know that in essence they should be here so we get we know their name we're assigned them an ID once they start then we'll get put in the hire date and if we know what department they're going to be in we can put them in there prior to them starting now that's it that's pretty basic that is um, pretty normalized at, at least at uh, third normal form because the only information that's in this table is tied to an employee. The department ID is going to help create the relationship in other tables within my database. So I'm going to get rid of this line, make it look a little bit cleaner, but you can see I've got clean code here. I've got my SQL code for creating the table. I've got my parentheses here to encapsulate what information I want in there. And I've got a constraint that says my employee ID column is going to be the primary key of the employee table. Once you've got this created, you can run it and your table should be created. If we hit the run button over here, we will get some feedback down here. If we had any errors, it would create there for us but it says our table is created. We can go up here to our find tables button 
and we can see we do have a table now that exists in our database. We could also run an, a command to say, you know, like select all the rows or all the records from this table and it would display down here. We know we don't have anything there, so we will not be doing that. Uh, you could run a select all from table or from employee and that would display all of your results. If we knew we had a hundred rows in there, we'd probably want to go up to our rows and expand this to allow for being able to see more than just 10 rows returned. So we've got this table. Well, we identified a department ID and I said that would be another table. So let's go ahead and create that table because the department table would only hold information that's pertinent to department. So when we are using normalization rules, that would be why we would have a second table. We wouldn't put everything in one table. That would just be ridiculous. And then we're doing what most of the world does, and that's using Excel spreadsheets or spreadsheet software for purposes that's not intended for that. So we are going to make sure that we are employing normalization here. And at bare minimum, we're at third normal form. And you can look up the rules for normalization. Hopefully at this point you have those. But let's go ahead and create that second table to show why we need a department table. So this is great practice just for creating a second another table and using your skills for SQL. So we're going to use the same method here. We're going to create table and of course we're going to call it department. Now I always use the same thing. I'm going to put my open parenthesis, drop down, put a close parenthesis and end with a semicolon. Now let's go up here and we'll start creating our columns. Well we already know we need a department ID so let's create that and we are going to name it exactly the same and that's what's going to create that relationship. In this table I want department ID. It has to be not null. There has to be information in here for this and not null is a keyword in almost every database management system. So I've got that and I'm just going to go ahead and create my constraint that this is going to be a primary key and so we're just going to do that constraint. We are going to call this department key or department primary key it is a primary key of this table and we are going to be using department ID as the column from which this information will be obtained. Now we have our constraint. We've established a primary key for this table. Next I'm going to add other columns that may be pertinent to this that are only related to this table. Um, let's give the department a name obviously. Department underscore name we're going to use varchar for the naming convention for this data type. And we could have some really long ones. Um, that's obviously when you're doing your design stages, you'll come up with what are, you should know the organization, know your customers as to how long this field should be. I'm going to just keep in contact with 30. That's probably pretty good. Um, you could have a shipping department, receiving department, human resources. Maybe you got a logistics department meteorological, engineering, astrophysics, dynamic, nuclear fusion. That would be quite a few characters. That might hit the 30 character limit. So you should know what your departments are. And of course, I'm making up some crazy ones there. And really, I don't think that there's much else to know. If we wanted a department supervisor ID, we would create another table for supervisors and we would assign them to the department using the department ID. So that would be another table that we could use and use department ID in that table as a foreign key just like we did up in our employee table because it's a primary key here. If we use this key in another table somewhere, then it's a foreign key to that table, but it creates a relationship. So we have this. Now to run this, we have multiple scripts here, but to run this, we can simply select the script we just created. After we've checked it out and made sure that everything looks good, you can see right now I have 
a error because I and I haven't run it yet but I did not put a comma here so make sure to put a comma in between that those rows so if I select this hit run we'll see if I get any errors it says the tables created that's great I can now see that I have multiple tables in my database well that was just a very simple tutorial on how to use the Oracle Apex and making sure to use those SQL skills to be able to work in your database. As I mentioned earlier, if I wanted to save the script, I could hit the save button over here and give it a name. And I will just say create table script. Put a description in here. This script. Uh, let's not, I'll say demonstrates SQL code for setting up new tables. Something simple. Just so that when you, if you need to reference this, you know exactly what that script's for. I can click save and my script will get saved. Now if I want to refer back to it, I can go in and look at my previous scripts. I hope you found this video helpful and that you continue to work and develop those SQL skills. One thing that's great about uh, programming language, and I consider SQL programming language because you are uh, programming, creating input for output in a database, that you get to see immediate results. We did not have any errors. I uh, was able to catch an error before I ran the script, but the database system would have caught that and given me an error. Well. Thank you for following along this video and I hope you found it helpful.